Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Indianapolis Colts. All that and more coming up next. Just a stone's throw from historic Monument Circle in downtown Indianapolis. We are at the beautiful Lucas Oil Stadium. But today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now. Because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted, they expect you to play earlier. And these guys as competitors, they'll take their lumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. Just about set for football. The veteran Matt Gay has it teed up, and we are underway now at Lucas Oil Stadium. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From the 33, here's second and a yard. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He'll find his tight end. It's Adam Troutman. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. But that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker. And now it's third down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. A first carry now for Jaleel McLaughlin. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, 
Their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. From the gun on third down, Knicks. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. As my dad used to tell me all the time when you're getting ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. That is caught. And he is going to have a Broncos first down with ease as he'll wind up getting nine there on fourth and five. Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. So after the fourth down conversion, now first and ten inside the 25. Looking to throw. Knicks. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Operating from the gun, Knicks. And this one is incomplete. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Knicks. Quick hitter here. It's complete. He'll get it inside the 20. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Off the bootleg, Knicks. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Atkins. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. And Williams is in for a Denver touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. On oh, the return, here's Dallas Flowers. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So now the Colts will get their first opportunity with a football. 
And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. They're mobile QB. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100-plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Ball at the 26, second and seven. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor, and he powers his way up past the 30. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Well, they need two. Here's third down. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. Fielded just inside the 30. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. Throwing to start the drive. Nix, and that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Here's second and ten. Off the play fake. Nix. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And, yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a first and ten. Operating from the gun, Nix. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Offense is moving a little bit, had him back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try to mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now a second and ten. 
Operating from the gun. Nix. Got his man complete over the middle. It's McLaughlin. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. On the return, it's Flowers taking it about the one. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. As that ball got away from him and he saw the opposing team recover it. You felt his pain? Oh, I felt his pain, <laughs> and you know what was going through his head. Tuck it away. Mm -hmm. Take care of the ball. All the things he hears all week in practice, he didn't carry it over into the game. They go play action here on first down. Touchdown! Cortland Sutton from 21 yards away. And the Broncos are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there. Lutz with the extra point, and yeah, that makes our score 17-0. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called can go. I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Second and ten. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. 
That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Third down at six. Now it's Richardson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. And now a stoppage. It looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. First and 10, Taylor now. He'll get it across midfield down to the 49. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. So from the 26-yard line, here's a second and four. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end. But unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead them to fourth down. Remember, that was less than a yard. That was not a full yard. That defense, they were having none of it. Yeah, the surge the offensive line was seeking actually occurred on the other side of the ball. They reestablished the line of scrimmage and stuffed them. They turn to Taylor on fourth. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Richardson. And it's caught. And the Colts are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Richardson looking to throw. Looking for Pierce, and he's got him. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Colts are able to cut into that deficit. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks just be pitchers in baseball. 
The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Denver's offense ready to go again. They have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. The give is to McLaughlin. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Oh, man. So they'll get the yardage on the run and get 15 more for good measure. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult to spot. You heard the sideline erupting, and the flags came out almost immediately. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. 48 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Looking to throw. Nix. Now throw right side here. Going to be incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Back to throw. Nix, they'll set up the screen. It's McLaughlin. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. They'll look to throw again. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 29-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Back to throw again. Throw left side complete. That's McLaughlin. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second and a couple.
Again, he'll drop to throw. That's into the hands of McLaughlin. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Looking to throw. Nix. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. The kick by Lutz is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And the Colts about to go on offense one final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Now Richardson back to throw it. That's caught. It's Josh Downs. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Richardson out of the shotgun. Steps away to his left. And he can't find a receiver and he's brought down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So after the sack, here, second and 14. Richardson looking to throw this. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. First and ten, it's Richardson. To the sideline and incomplete. 
Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. A final shot before the half. Richardson He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And that's going to be incomplete. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was former Tar Heel Javante Williams with a solid first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. On the return, it's Flowers. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game start of the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, and that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the option left, Richardson. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They run once more with Taylor. A very tough run, but for a pretty short gain out near the 32. Cody Barton there to bring him down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Richardson. And that is incomplete. Well, if they have any designs of getting back into this football game in the second half, they're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. He'll look to set up his blockers. 35 yards that time on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. And Williams is going to pick up a Broncos first down as he's up to the 44-yard line. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. He'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That's complete to Troutman right side. Seven yards there and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Throwing on first down. Knicks, a short one to the tight end, Troutman. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's second and three. Back to throw. Nix, a short one to the tight end, Troutman. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 74 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Mims in motion left. They'll fake the jet sweep, and instead to give up the middle to Williams. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Looking to throw on second down. Nix. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Quinny Pay able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And you get the feeling, Charles, yeah, he's got the two sacks now, but he may get more here. We still got a quarter and then some to go. And the way that he is playing this game, it reminds me of one of the best golfers in the world who can use every club in the bag and make a great shot. That's what he's doing with his pass rush moves right now, showing a little bit of everything. They have no way of stopping him. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He finds his man complete. It's McLaughlin. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will extend their lead even further. 
So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And the Colts getting ready to go. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Richardson to the air on first down. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third and one, Richardson to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Defense was expecting run in their delta pass of over 15 yards. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do. Trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Running straight ahead, Taylor. He'll take this to the 46. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 46, here's a second and seven. Here's Richardson to throw. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Colts on third down. Two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 31-yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Richardson to throw off play action. He's got the tight end, Mo Ali Cox. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. And Richardson looks to throw once more. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Baron Browning picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. 
This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Decent run, maybe hoping for a little bit more. It does, though, set up third and manageable. And every play of this run, if it's blocked perfectly and executed perfectly, it's set up to go for a touchdown, right? But I like the way you described that one. Just get into a third and manageable. Nice decision-making and took care of the football. On third down, here's Richardson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was ripe for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. Fourth down, desperation time. Here's Richardson, and he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Big stop on the turnover on downs to get the football back, and now it's just all about salting this one away. Yeah, just slowly bleed the clock away. Clock's definitely on your side. And, you know, when we talk about analytics in the game, what is this one, the advanced win metrics? Because if you take care of the football here, bleed the clock down, were they about 95% chance of oh, winning Oh, yeah, it? I'd say 95 or better. I, and I know you always say it, every coach does. It's just protecting the football at this point. And knowing that the defensive guys, they're coming after the ball more than they are the person. They want to knock it free. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Operating from the gun, Nix. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Flushed out right. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. Now that's a killer because you think you've got it absolutely covered and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third and then the tables turn. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. Give him 10 yards on the keeper, and it'll lead to a second down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. 79 yards rushing for him now to this point. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys, they're just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. On second down, Williams. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And just shedding him off there. And he is going to have the Broncos first, and that should be the capper. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured they go down to a knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.